Yeah, time to pick out your postseason gear. The Nats are headed to the playoffs as East Division champions. Some business to take care of and some rough news from last night. Of course, the Wilson Ramos situation. Bryce Harper wanted to be back in the lineup tonight. Hopefully that happens tomorrow. I guess we need a little good news and maybe Bryce is it for now. Yeah, I'm glad that Bryce may be back in there tomorrow. Daniel Murphy on the men, but you just feel bad for Wilson Ramos, the person, the player. You know, all the bad luck he's been through throughout his career, the kidnapping, the ACL, the MCL a couple years ago, and then last night, the high throw. You remember we had the hamstring problems. He just hasn't been able to stay healthy. He's having a career year. He's about to get paid. And then this happens last night. So a huge buzzkill for Wilson Ramos. But with you know, one man's injury, another man has to step up. So when you look at can you win over a six month period with Wilson Ramos out? No. But can you win in a 19 game postseason without Wilson Ramos and these two guys? Absolutely. He had a good point on Jose Lobaton how good he is defensively. Everybody on this staff loves throwing to him and Max Scherzer will tonight. So Scherzer gets the call. This is a game the Nats need because the Dodgers are going to play tonight. They're a game back. Time to keep on winning down the stretch here. Well, with the sad news about Wilson Ramos, the good news is we get to watch Max Scherzer pitch tonight <laughs> and go for win number 19 and hopefully solidify that number one spot in the Cy Young. Yeah, Max. In the top two or three in so many different categories. He's the strikeout king in Major League Baseball right now. Bottom line though is winning. Last seven starts six and oh, 13 and three since the first of June. It's the ace, who by the way is a former D back against one of his old ball clubs tonight. Baseball on Masson brought to you by PNC Bank for the Achiever in You and by Airlines for America, where airplanes land, opportunity takes off. Big opportunity for Max Scherzer and the Nats tonight as they seek their 92nd win of the year, their 47th at home, and trying to stay ahead of those Dodgers who've been playing well. They will be in action later. It's a cool night, nice night. 71 at game time, humidity up a little bit. 
Good night to get a ball game in. Some weather on the way tomorrow. We'll have to deal with that eventually. Yasmani Tomas, one of the bats the Nats had to deal with last night. He drove in five runs with a three-run homer and a two-run double. Gene Segura swinging the bat well at the top of their lineup. And Jake Lamb, followed by Paul Goldschmidt, gives them a very good one-two-three punch. Max Scherzer was drafted in the first round by the Diamondbacks back in 06. And after two seasons, they traded him. Segura goes up hacking and hits it out of the ballpark on the first pitch. Gene Segura third home run in six at bats in this series. Twentieth home run of the year and he goes first pitch ambush. So Max Scherzer's first pitch of the game goes far. Supposed to be away, little two seamer that ran in. And this one starts with a bang for the Diamondbacks, picking up right where they left off from last night. Who is this guy? Yeah, when did he get pop? And by the way, for Segura, his 30th hit of September, he's had at least 30 hits in every month this season. Jake Lamb is next. He's hit 29. Numbers on Max, 18 and 7 on the year, 282 ERA, 1 6 and 0 in his last seven starts. A 13 and 3 with a 219 ERA since June 1st, 177 strikeouts, just 30 walks. And I think the most impressive stat since June 1st, a 178 average against. So June, July, August, September, four months of teams hitting 178 against him. And about the only time he gives up any runs when they are solo homers, most of them are. 29 on the year, so he's sixth in the ERA, second opponent's batting average, and of course, far and away first in strikeouts. Adam Hamari, youngest member of the umpiring crew, CB Buckner at third, pardon me, first, Manny Gonzalez at third. And there's Field and Cobra at the crew chief who's out at second base. One two pitch again. He made an offer. No swing says Gonzalez. You don't mind if I call the home plate umpire tonight, Cal, do you? Cal? Calamari? Calamari? Yeah. It's your call. I'm just going to call him Cal. I just like that name better than Adam. Upstairs, a home run and a walk. And Paul Goldschmidt will bat with a man on base. If he gets upset, I'll call him Fried Calamari. Here's a defense for the Nats tonight behind Max. Worth, Turner, Goodwin, the outfield. Espinosa, Rendon, left side. Drew Zimmerman, right side. And Jose Lobatone behind the plate. It's Jose. I'm kind of reiterating what I said in the open. We feel for Wilson Ramos and all the injuries he's had and not being able to play in the postseason. And this ball club couldn't win over a six month stretch without Wilson Ramos. But in a short sprint of a season with Jose Lobaton behind the plate and his game calling skills and his framing ability in a 19 game sprint potentially, I think they're going to be just fine. And that's just not spin control. That's a lot of years playing baseball. Anything can happen in a five game series. Pitching and defense are what wins championships in the postseason. How many times have you seen 10 to 8 games in the playoffs, Carp? So, yeah, we're all sad about Wilson, but this team's still going to win with Bryce Harper and Daniel Murphy. Now, if those two are out, forget everything I just said. But they're not going to be. They're coming back. 0-2 to Goldschmidt. It's on a seven-game hitting streak, 11 for 30. And this one popped up right side. Ryan Zimmerman backpedaling. Foul ground. One out.
A.J. Cole today suspended five games by Major League Baseball for throwing behind Jung Ho Gung in Pittsburgh. Yasmani Tomas against the Nats this year has homered in three consecutive games. Hit a long one here last night, and he's the D-backs guy with 30 right now. Brian Goodwin swinging well for the Nats. 11 for 34 overall and four for his last nine, driving in three runs. And he plays a nice right field. Here's the catcher, Wellington Castillo. I also think, kind of finishing my point, Carp, that when you lose a, a really good player like Wilson, it could really bring a team together in the sense that, hey, let's win it for Wilson. Let's do this as a team now. And it can have that kind of effect in the clubhouse. You know, you had a, a bench clear with Pittsburgh the other night. Those sometimes bring a team together. An injury to a player, as much as it hurts you deep down inside, you know what he has to go through to get back, can bring a team together. So we'll just see how it all plays out. But I am probably looking at this thing a little different than everybody else. It's not doom and gloom. This team still can win. Well, if you don't have the attitude you're talking about, why go out there? Exactly. Major League players, whether they start every day or not, Lobatone is going to be able to prove what he can do with this pitching staff. And that's ball two to Castillo, who's driven in 22 runs his last 25 games. Career high 66 for him. Here's Pedro Severino, and, you know, he might catch on a day when a Reynaldo Lopez starts. I mean, those guys know each other pretty well. I catch on a day when Clayton Kershaw starts. That's a fast ball loan away. Here's Spencer Keyboom. Welcome to the big leagues. We have two key booms in the organization. Spencer's 25. And his brother Carter, the shortstop, the Nats' number one pick this year. 94 games at Double A Harrisburg this year. That ball is hit well to left. Here comes Worth to his right to grab the line drive for the second out. And next is the left fielder Brandon. So Drew. Castillo hit it hard. And decided to flip his bat on a line drive out to left. Hmm. Interesting. Brandon Drury one for three with an RB guy against Scherzer earlier this year. Nats won that game eight to three back in August at Arizona. Anthony Rendon had a lot of the ice cream cones showing on that one. And he gets it over to second base. The Segura homer one nothing.
Nice ball game here last night with a couple of RBIs and three for five. So he's at the top of the lineup and really in all offensive categories since August or so, the start of August. For the Nats, just doing everything. A lot of multi hit games here at home. So he's batting 340 on base percentage is 360. Steven Drew up to the number three spot. Rendon the fourth, Zimmerman fifth, and Jose Lobatone ahead of Max Scherzer. Matt Cook from Cherokee, Iowa. He's 25 years of age, originally drafted by the Mets. First start, sixth appearance. Yeah, first major league start. He's done some relief last time out on the 24th against Baltimore. He fared fairly well. You see opponents written 125 against the fastball cutter curveball changeup combination. And Trey Turner trying to get an ambush of his own, but it's a pop up to the right side. It's a foul ball when caught by Paul Goldschmidt. So here's the defense for the Diamondbacks behind Cook, Drury, Hanniger, Tomasi outfield, Owings Lamb left side, Segura Goldsmith right side. And the stake behind the plate, Wellington Castillo. Jason Worth has been on base 10 of his last 12 games. Two pitches to pop up and strike one. I think you're going to see Dusty tinker with the batting order here in the upcoming days, trying to find something a little different to make up for Wilson Ramos's absence. I'd be thinking about moving Jason Worth down into an RBI spot. He said he stayed here till one o'clock in the morning last night, drawing up lineups on his desk. He looked down, his trash can was full of lineups. <laughs> Just goes to show you how much thought he puts into you know a major injury like Wilson and how he's going to move forward didn't wait till today coming back to the yard he stayed here till one o'clock. Yeah you lose. A big presence in your lineup you have to move things around it's like losing somebody in the bullpen suddenly some roles change I asked him I said what you had Lobatone leading off at one and finally gave it gave it up. That hits Jason Worth he's aboard with one out. Well, here's Stephen Drew. I remember Jason had one up and in last night, and now he gets one up and in tonight. And he's a thinker. I guarantee you he's on first going. What did I do to these guys? A little collateral damage there, huh? Yeah, well, like kind of thing. odd. Jason didn't play the final game of that three game series in Arizona. He had a three hit night with a home run in game two. A single to run scored in game one. Nothing we can think of that would warrant them going after him, but some pitches have definitely been all over him so far in this series. And here's Drew, who's seven for his last 19. Six ball games, five runs, four walks. Could have something to do with maybe something that happened last year in the clubhouse. Who knows? Just let that one marinate for a second. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm, yeah, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I like to stir the pot. Duo pitches in there. And with Worth holding a two one chopper. Counts even.
Diamondbacks pitching staff the highest ERA in baseball at 5.14. Minnesota the next worst at 5.11. Diamondbacks are 65 and 91. And the bulk of that is at home where they're 18 games under 500. 2 2 pitch. I like the teal in the grays tonight better than the dark unis last night. I like the trim. That's sharp. They are the University of Oregon of Major League Baseball. No, because Oregon unis are good. Even the orange socks they wore the other day, so yes. they would truly look like ducks. They were looking like the mascot. I loved them. Okay. That ball is in the right field corner, but foul. Okay. <laughs> Somebody's ready for a rumble tonight. Give me the Nats plus read. We got to renew that guy for next year. Yeah, or you could get seats next to him. Or you could not sit within two sections of him because he looks like he could attack at any moment. 2 2 to Drew. Swinging the bat so well. Target is up and in here. Then he's able to turn on it and stay alive. And drew the other way to go out of play. I mean, he's just a great at bat waiting to happen these days. Professional hitter, man. He's got a game plan, he sticks to it, and then if and the game plan doesn't work and get the two strikes, he sticks his nose in there and fights you. Mercedes Benz on the A B. You two can, pitches inside. You can have a game plan, meaning I'm looking for one pitch in one spot. You foul off that pitch, and now two strikes. You throw it out the window and just fight. You compete. 2-2, two, two, and he touches one to center. Playable for Mitch Hanniger. And two outs as Worth returns to first. Now Anthony Rendon finds himself the cleanup man after hitting third last night. Base percentage just did get under 350 for the first time in a while. He's been up around 355, 360 most of the season. Two doubles short of 40. A lot of room left center jury the left fielder really playing deep. And a big swing by Rendon counts even 1 1. Matt Cook 6'3, 215 pitch at the University of Louisville or Louisville if you live in that area. Virtually drafted by the Red Sox, didn't sign. The Mets did draft him. And he was involved in the Addison Reed deal August 30th of last year. That was after the non waiver trading deadline. I like the snake on the sleeve. Strong. 
One and two to Anthony Rendon. Off speed. Stayed right with it. 48 RBI for Rendon since the All-Star break. That's tied for fourth most in the National League. Remember Dusty Baker moved him down the order. Want him to drive in runs. He was hitting second early in the year before he got going. Then Dusty said, hey, I need you to drive in some runs for you. It seemed like forever in the beginning of the season for Anthony Rendon to check in with some RBIs. Remember he was having trouble? But he yeah, was didn't hitting he at the top like of the order. Didn't he have one until the end of April? Yeah, he was hitting at the top of the order, though, and there was nobody on for him to drive in. Yeah. Good take. Counts even 2-2. Two, two. Anthony's two RBIs away from his career high. 21 home runs, 83 batted in two years ago. Yeah, he's got to get to 20 home runs. We got to get him there somehow. We'll just think homers every time he comes up, but if we all do it together, maybe it'll happen. This ball popped up right side. Goldschmidt over there and waiting for it. So the Nats out on three fly balls, worth hit by a pitch, and a good start for young Matt Cook. Mm -hmm. Top two here in D.C. Obviously tough news for the Nationals last night with Wilson Ramos going down. Danny Espinosa was asked earlier today about that injury, said it's heartbreaking for Wilson, it's heartbreaking for the team, but we're very, very fortunate that we have another starting catcher in Jose Lobatone. And based on what Dusty Baker indicated today, Lobatone will likely get the bulk of the starts against right-handed starters, but his sprained right ankle is still bugging him a little bit, especially when hitting right-handed, and so Pedro Severino will likely start against lefties. Lobi said he talked to Ramos, said he's upset, but that he's trying to stay positive. He told Wilson that he and the team are doing their best to win a ring for him, and he said, that's my job now to help us get to a World Series and win a World Series for Wilson. Well said by Jose Lobatone. Thank you, Dan. With our Coons.com sideline report, and a line drive base hit to left by Yasmani Tomas. Over two million vehicles sold in counting. And the Diamondbacks, two hits so far, three well hit balls, and down to the number seven man, the shortstop, Chris Owings. And I'm sure they will continue to wear the Buffalo hats in honor of our all star catcher. Fastball riding up and in, and Owings is late for it to the other side. Well, if you're paying attention, this is one of those nights when Max is going to have to fight. It's not, the command isn't A plus like we've seen in the past. We've also seen him win about six or seven games like this this year. So on the nights when it isn't coming out free and easy and he's not hitting his spots, he usually fights. 
and more times than not ends up winning. And I think that's my favorite quality about Max. When he has his B stuff, how he competes. Well, Jose Lobatone took a bit of a blow right there, checking the gear. You see the reach by Lobatone before the blow? Reached all the way across the plate. Max having trouble getting it to the to the glove side tonight. Nets have turned 139 double plays. 0-2 pitch. And that's a line drive on an 0-2 pitch right up the middle. Two on, nobody out. I remember his last start against the Marlins on the 21st. Gave up three runs on four hits. There was a home run late that kind of put some runs on the board, but he was spectacular the whole game. We had noticed and noted early in the game that his windup was a little more deliberate, more slow. Staying over the mound a little bit longer, staying over the, the rubber a little bit longer. On the inside edge with a breaking ball. Center fielder Mitch Hanniger. And what does that do? It allows you to stay back just like a hitter and get that arm out in front and get that down angle on the fastball and get that snap on the slider. Hanniger homered last night. Two run shot in the sixth. He was their minor league player of the year this season, hitting 321 at double A, triple A. And he's a clone of Chris Bryant from the Cubs. This one to center, hanging up for Trey Turner. Nowhere for the runners to go on the first out with Matt Cook coming in to hit. Wednesday, September 28th is Hispanic Heritage Day. It's presented by Budweiser. Watch the Nats take on the Diamondbacks at 7.05 if it doesn't rain. Celebrate with live music, pregame DJ, a flag presentation, and more. Visit nationals.com slash tickets. We are hoping the rain stays away. I'll just ignore that flash flood warning that just popped up on my phone. Matt Cook, one plate appearance this year as a reliever. It was a sacrifice bunt that he did successfully. Trying to do another one here. And he laid off as Max dropped the breaking ball low, ball one. Rendon and Zimmerman pinching from the corners. Upstairs, ball two. All right, after 1-0 and on the board, now that was strike one, the first one. So that fastball will even the count 1-1. One, one. And he lays that one down perfectly. Nobody over there but Rendon. And on to Stephen Drew. 5-4 on the sacrifice. Moving two runners ahead. That's a big bunt because now you have a guy that's been a tough out to say the least in this series early on. With a chance to drive in a couple of more. First pitch fastball home run. First time up. What does Max do here with the base open? Well, Segura last night, three long balls to right center, two home runs, had a base hit to right. And he is three hits away from 200. Segura close to 400 his last 14 games.
Great slider. Nissan will track it. It's 0-2. Maybe the best pitch of the night so far by Max. Watch this slider be a strike for just a second and then disappear late. Probably get another one, I would imagine. Unless he backs him off with a fastball to get to the slider, 1-2. And then he went ahead and buried it. Good block by Jose Lobaton. Inside the numbers brought to you by Jeep. So guys leading off and leading just about everything else as well. Segura and Turner. Great batting averages. Leadoff guys more than their share of extra base hits and RBIs and scoring runs. Segura 95 runs on the year 10th in the league and Trey just can't wait to see him for six months. Killing the Nats, 462. 23 career home runs in four years. And now this year he's hit 20. He's at 20 30 men, 30 bags, and a 1 2 with two outs. Having trouble getting that release point. Body's a little quick, the arm's trying to catch up, and then he's yanking that fastball across the plate. Getting rotational with the shoulders, meaning he's kind of spinning out of there. When he's at his best, that chest just drops toward home plate, and the arm's a byproduct of the chest going forward. Two-two slider struck him out. Pretty good time for his first K of the night. Two long innings for Max, but he keeps it one nothing. of age Mount Pleasant South Carolina and when he was a Clemson they called him the best defensive catcher in the nation when you have insight you know how to handle your finances with confidence brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you so that middle stat there tells you that he can get guys at second base or around the infield for the Nats fifth round out of Clemson back in 2012 in his first day in the big leagues. Well, he was the only guy in the 40 man roster that wasn't called up, so. They're all here. He's here now. Pretty the cool. whole 40 man roster is here. <laughs> there he is. Congratulations. I mean, the good thing is, is you're on the 40 man. The bad thing is, is you knew exactly where you stood on the 40 man <laughs> because you were the last guy, but now he's in the big leagues, so it doesn't matter. Two hopper. 
Well, that's not true. It's just based on need, and they already had three catchers, but it's fun to joke about a little bit. Brian Zimmerman out early in the count. Brian Goodwin and Danny Espinoza are next. Yeah, Kibu out of that great baseball area, Marietta, Georgia, went to Walton High School there. One of the more interesting names, of course, in baseball. His dad was born in the Netherlands. They enjoyed dual citizenship. And here is Brian Goodwin. He's 11 for 34. He's done well early in his big league career. 18 games hitting 324. Kiboom in Dutch means home run. Cool. I just made that up, so don't quote me on it. Now we're going to have to get a Dutch language chart up here, too. Uh -huh. Yeah, they say key boom. That's a homer. It's like, they'll see you later. Hey, the gnomes are here. <laughs> they got their Ben Revere gnome. They got their cute gnome hats on. I love it. Gnome sisters for life. Way to go, ladies. One, two pitch. Swing and a miss. Matt Cook burying one inside to the left-handed batter, his first strikeout. All right, Carp, here you go. Running the bases isn't just for the kids anymore. Special ticket fans ages 60 and older can stroll the bases following the Nats Diamondbacks game on Thursday, September 29th, 105 start. To get your senior stroll the bases ticket, visit nationals.com slash senior stroll. I think it would be cool if you went down there, Carp. Well, I, Johnny Holland and I and Ray Knight are thinking about running a three-man relay. And those who aren't 60 but soon will be will love it. Quite a play by Gene Segura. He was on the move full speed. Quick hands to get Danny Espinoza and a one, two, three second for Matt Cook. A lot of speed involved in this play. for the Nats so far worth it by a pitch inside the number is brought to you by Jeep so we're tracking the Dodgers now on a daily basis Kenta Maeda throws for them at San Diego against Paul Clemens later tonight so they're at the pods for three the Giants for three while the Nats are home all week three more against the D-backs including tonight and then the Marlins are here the Dodgers hold the tiebreaker they swept the Nats in L.A. and won two out of three here so in essence the Nats have to finish a game up on them to avoid that tie at least one game up. So here's Jake Lamb leading off the third and then they would be the Friday Saturday game right here at Nats Park. That's how that thing works. It would that ball is scorched to center. Trey Turner watches it hit halfway up the wall to the right of the 402 mark. 
And that's quite a throw into second base. Jake Lamb making a bid for his 30th home run. It'll be his 31st double. Okay, first of all, great swing by Jake Lamb. This ball's hit hard. But watch Trey Turner realize he's not going to catch it and play it off the wall. You remember there's been a few instances where he gets too close to the ball because he thinks he can catch it. But what a throw by Trey from almost the warning track right on the money to make this a lot closer and make Jake Lamb stay on the base. If he pops off the base there, they got an out. Good swing, good play. Here's Goldschmidt who fouled out first time. Slider in there for a strike. Paul Goldschmidt career 0 for 8 against Max Scherzer, including tonight. Five strikeouts. But he's been swinging the bat better lately, as I mentioned, seven game hitting streak, and it got him over 300 by a click coming into this one tonight. Good pitch inside edge. So the evolution of the game is now in such a way that you hold the tag on and everybody watch Stephen Drew here just keep it on just in case Jake Lamb comes off the base and watch him look at the umpire. So just in case some part of the body the hand comes off the base that's what everybody does now right. Never used to see that before but. It's a good practice. Because if you come off the bag they'll see it in New York. Yep. That's a great pitch. Check swing. Goldschmidt down on strikes. Max Scherzer second in the last three hitters. Pretty much living on a slider tonight. And Paul Goldschmidt can't hold up, and that's okay. He's trying to figure it out. He's trying to ham and egg this one together tonight with his B plus B stuff. And that's okay. His B stuff is, is better than most people's A stuff. But when he has his A stuff, that's when you see the double digit strikeouts, the flirting with a no hitter, flirting with a perfect game, all, all the ones, the good ones that you remember. Look at Jose's arm sleeve with the capital on it. <laughs> that's pretty cool. And on the back side there is your apartment. Did you see it? No, I must have missed that. That's yeah, right. Here's Castillo. Keep throwing that slider. It's a good one. Castillo hit it hard first time. Line drive to Worth and left. And another shot to center. This is over Trey Turner's head. One hops the wall to the left of the 402. Lamb scores easily. And Wellington Castillo adds to his career high in RBIs now with 67. Well, hit the ball hard his first time up to left, right at Jason Worth, and this one. Is over Turner's head. You see the fastball was supposed to be down and away. It was up right down the middle, and big league hitters usually don't miss those. So the fastball command has been an issue for Max Scherzer in this one early. The slider's been great. He just hasn't been able to plant that fastball where he wants it yet. Two nothing. They've out hit the Nats. Five nothing. Here's Drury. Ground ball to Rendon first time up. Right in there with 86. 
Counts even 1 1. First inning 17 pitches then 16 and now 43 as he's faced three batters here in the third leaning on that slider you saw that 51 percent of the time with the off speed I haven't seen too many change ups tonight yet. Maybe his best heater perfectly on the edge. 2 2. Let's see where Jose Lobaton's setting up. Dart in the spot, shaving off the front corner of the plate. Good pitch. Right center for this one. Trey Turner to his left to get there. Heading for third, Castillo. Trey's going to show off the arm and throw it on a fly to Rendon. So he's thrown a bullet to second and a bullet to third. Two down. Trey Turner showing off the hose tonight. I didn't know he had this. And watch Anthony Rendon just casually walk over and deke while he took a seat. Look at da -da 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 -da. There it is. And then put the tag on just a hair late. The reason he did that is so maybe Castillo pulls up and you get the out at third. I like that. There's Yasmani Tomas. I don't think anybody's going to call that an infield arm. Tomas pulled a base hit to left first time. Next year's a game into this game. Right handers hitting 151 this season. And they've had some mighty swings from the right side of the plate. Four hits, Lamb, the left hander, got one over Turner's head earlier in the inning. And a 2 0. Relying on the slider to get back into the count here. You know, Max has a good heater going. It's 94 97. He's got command. It's 2 0 count. He's challenging you. But tonight it's turned into American League baseball for Max. What does that mean? Well, in American League, you pitch backwards. You throw off speed and hitters counts. You always try to keep guys off balance because there's so many sluggers in that league. And based on what the Diamondbacks did last night, they played like an American League team. So he's throwing a lot of off speed tonight and hitting counts just because he doesn't have the fastball command where he wants it yet. Took Tomas up the ladder a bit for strike two. Tomas doesn't walk much 30 times in 517 at bats. He's in there to hack and we'll see how Max with that last pitch in mind goes after him here. Takes him up there again, and it's a foul. Yeah, I like the elevated fastball. It's just a matter of getting it there. So good try by Max. He's fighting. See if he, after two high fastballs, decides to go back to that slider again, down and away. Tried. The 
Mercedes Benz with the entire AB. Good ID by Tomas there. Makes the count three and two. Chris Owings to base it up the middle his first time. Hits number 53 coming for Max already. He is grinding right now. Got him. Tomas hacking. And he got him to swing at three pitches that were out of the strike zone. In that AB, Max gets his third K, and the Diamondbacks lead by two. Nationals Park. But how about Friday? It'll be election night. So we'll have a little fun with the political season. The Nats and the Marlins. First 25,000 fans received their choice of a Nationals branded donkey or elephant mascot figurine. While supplies last, for details and tickets, visit nationals.com slash election night. If you're an independent, have fun at the game. You get nothing and like it. Lobatone, Scherzer, and Turner, bottom of the third. Jose's last 13 starts, he's hitting 300. Ooh, he tried to hit a homer right there. He's hit three during that time. Thirty six game. Jose has not had a hundred at bats this year. This will be his ninety second. He hits the ball well out to center right at Mitch Hanniger. Next up is Max Scherzer who will find a way to compete with the bat. So it's BCF PDK on Madison tonight here from Nationals Park. It's game number 157. Nats lead the season series 3 1. <laughs> 11 hits this year, 8 RBIs. He 
pitching quite well. Matt Cook in his first big league start after five relief appearances. He has Max 0 2. Good take, and it's ball one. That's near knock. That's a perfect fastball to the outside edge. First time through the order, the Nationals go 0 for 8, worth hit by a pitch. And Trey Turner will be up with two outs. Swinging on the first pitch, he saw, popped it up to first. Well, we've seen all year the Nats facing somebody for the first time, kind of gather info first time around, maybe even struggle a little bit, and second time. It's a whole different story. So we'll see if that's the case here tonight. They're real good at making the adjustments second and third time around. Turner to center. Just backing up for it, Hanniger. And now it's nine out of ten retired by Matt Cook to start the game. including tonight and I asked him yesterday what in these two starts he's hoping to accomplish before the postseason rolls around he said the main thing is you try and lock in all your pitches make sure everything is feeling especially sharp in these final two outings so that when the postseason does come you feel like you've got all your pitchers where you want them but from a physical standpoint Max said this start in particular is the biggest one you want to push yourself hard try and get in as many pitches as you can in this start so that in your last start of the year which comes in the regular season finale you can take a little bit of a breather. Max said he wants to maybe dial it back to 95 pitches or so in that final start of the regular season. Said he's got a little extra in the tank for that game one start in the NLDS, which will come on normal rest. He says this is the start where you push it. So we'll look for Max to push it as we get into the middle innings tonight, guys. And hopefully the offense can get going, give him a chance to win his 19th game. So with over 2 million vehicles sold and counting, that's our Coons.com sideline report with Dan Coco. Owings, Hanniger, Cook, top four. I'd love to see him win 19, so that last start he has a chance for 20, obviously. And that would make for a Sunday afternoon, huh? Yeah. Well, you could need a little help from his offense here tonight. A lot of breaking ball popped up left side. Anthony Rendon over there. And no chance. Swing and a miss. Max Scherzer has struck out four of the last seven batters. Let's go inside the numbers. Brought to you by PNC. 
coming into the game the strikeouts so we'll add four to that total and the wins the innings Max just all over the sheet for that possible Cy Young and over 220 innings now. See, I think his strikeouts are what separate him apart from everybody else. When you're talking about all the Cy Young candidates, we had a graphic we're going to show you here in a second with the leading candidates. But I think that that's what gives him the inside track. But I just, from a selfish standpoint, would love to see him win 20. Curveball, a beauty. 76 on the big hook. It's starting to tinker with some other pitches. The curveball and changeup usually second, third time around. Saves him. Yeah, but he just can't hit the spot with a fastball tonight. It's got to be frustrating for him. His mechanics are just a little off, a little quick. Two two on the slider another strikeout three in a row and number five here you go. Here's your candidates for the Cy Young your leading candidates in our opinion and check out the strikeouts for Max and Red I think that's what separates them from everybody else. That's just ridiculous. Soak it in talk amongst yourself so I think the guy on the left is the leader but I'm pretty biased as you all know. Matt Cook sacrifice first time up first two big league at bats at least plate appearances sacrifice bunts. Nobody to move here will be hacking one ball one strike. That's a good heater bolted that one to the outside edge. You know, Max has talked about there's been a few starts this year when he hasn't pitched with his fastball. What's that mean? He hasn't had the command that he wanted. So when I say ham and egg in it, he's just kind of putting it together with slider, curveball, change, showing the fastball. But that was a good one. Brings the breaking ball around with the curve and gets three K's to strike them all out in the fourth inning. Worth Drew and Rendon coming up. Max keeping his guys in the game. It's a two nothing ball game as the strikes. The strikeouts are now coming.
Robinson and Dre's 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. That's not Ben Revere. That is not Ben Revere. We've seen gnomes do damage before. Oh, these violent little gnomes. Look at these guys. And there goes Ben. That's really better than I think. Why are gnomes violent? Is that a thing? Those people aren't hitting people over the I head with bats right there. They're just dancing and enjoying themselves. I would just suggest next time you're trimming your hedges or working in your yard, have your have your head on a swivel. Be looking. You never know. Or just take your bat out there and crush your gnome. Be preemptive. Look at these things. Look at I'm just a gnome. I'm sitting here right to the jaw. George down. You don't treat presidents like that. I don't care if they're not real and they have huge heads. That's brutal. Like Jason Worth is a, is, is a, has a magnet in his back pocket. Yeah, now a changeup over Jason Worth's head. You get some target practice here on Jason Worth. And they're throwing at him every single time. At that off speed, I'm just making light, but he has seen some pitches up and in. Jason, the only Nat to reach. Hit by a pitch, first time up, one out, first inning. So here we are in the fourth, still looking for that first hit of the night. Up, but in the zone, according to Adam Hamari, two balls, one strike. Garden Gnomes, angry, I'm, I'm Googling. Yeah, apparently they are angry. I mean, they're probably frustrated because they're two foot four. Three, two. Worth on a pitch up, back to the screen, good hack. Cats yeah, still looking for their first knock. Jason Worth battling as usual in a 3-2 count. And he had Worth reaching on that one, so a pop fly to right. Yasmani Tomas, first out, fourth inning. Fourth inning of Nationals baseball, brought to you by the RAV4 Hybrid, all-wheel drive and unexpected performance. Visit buyatoyota.com tonight. Drew and Rendon, the next two. Fly ball to center first time. All even at 2 2. It looks to me like Matt Cook's effectively wild right now. He's not hitting all of his spots, but he's got a good little fastball with some arm side run. And the Nets hitters are swinging with the count. 
And he's missing just enough to be effective. And Drew lifting one high to left center. Some carry will take it to the track. Pulled in by Hanniger. Two oh, outs. Ball was hit. He can't believe it stayed in here. Pretty good at bat again by Stephen Drew. Just missed one his first time up to center. And this one, I don't know, last home stand's gone. Little slider didn't do a whole lot. Stephen Drew lets it travel and hits it as well as you can the other way. I think the cool air here tonight held that up. That was a good at bat. Rendon fouled out to Goldschmidt first base side to end the first inning. Since then he's been perfect. Last minor league start September 4th cooked through 90 pitches. And now that he's at 50 it's the most he's thrown in a big league ball game. This of course as we mentioned his first start after five relief appearances. Diamondbacks have to be ecstatic with what they've seen so far. See what I mean by effectively wild so he'll just run that fastball in on you then that cutter he has this around 90 has been his pitch so far. There it is. Right in there, up in the zone. Rendon tosses away the bat, and the Nats are done in the fourth. 14 straight for Matt Cook. Top of the fifth inning. Let's check out Gene Segura's night so far. First pitch he saw, first pitch of the ball game, a sinker for Max Scherzer that was supposed to be away was up and in, and Segura just drops the barrel on it. So one pitch, one fastball, one homer, and then Max Scherzer goes to the slider pretty much exclusively the second time to get Segura through him, three of them for strikes. We'll see what he does here in round three. Yeah, top of the fifth inning rolls around. 2-5-0 Diamondbacks, they've stranded four. Zeros across the board for the Nats who have stranded one base runner. And the 0-1 pitch. Ah. Third time around dropping the changeups now. Haven't seen many changeups for Max yet. So he strikes out six out of nine guys second time through the order. Inside the numbers. Traveling with Jeep. Here's the 0-2. Got him. Segura 
for the second time and now Max has struck out five consecutive Arizona hitters. Well he's making the adjustments. This is why he's so great. This is why he's one of the best in the game. So the fastball command not on point tonight. What's he done now he's throwing the change up. So back to back change ups to Segura who's been killing the Nats in this one. So a home run on the first pitch two strikeouts to follow. And you remember last inning with those three strikeouts he had he was featuring the curveball. So now he's going to the complete arsenal fastball slider curveball and change early on it was just two pitches fastball and slider now he's using all four. Lamb a walk and a double his leadoff two bagger to deep center help get the Diamondbacks their second run in the third. One out later Castillo hit one just to the left way out there as well. Ball two it seems to me the change up and you remember Dan doing the report on how he holds it grips it it's kind of a feel thing like a mid range jump shot. The change ups getting his arm out in front more in the fastball now too it's slowing him down and he's got better command with the heater. Max Scherzer hasn't struck out fewer than 231 batters since 2011. And he's on a career pace here. Long way to go for Rendon. He's on the full move, and neither Anthony or Lobatone, who went a long way, could get there. Anthony Rendon on the ship playing out way towards short. A good effort by both guys. It's like you do. Look where Rendon is. He's starting on the pull side shortstop position to come all the way in front of the dugout. And Jose Lobato knows that he's the only one. Did his helmet get in the way there? Maybe at the end? I don't know if he stumbled over the helmet or not. Full count with one out. And Lamb strikes out on an off speed pitch. Six in a row, eight in the game for Max Scherzer, Nissan tracks it. <laughs> How many pitchers on a night like tonight can strike out six batters in a row? He's got so many weapons at his disposal. It doesn't matter if the fastball's not particularly fantastic on a night. It gets you with the curve, the slider, and the changeup. Six in a row yeah. for Max Scherzer. Yeah, how many pitchers on such a night? Are already showering. And Max Scherzer out there not only competing now, but dominating. Seven consecutive batters. That's why he's an ace. See, fastball's just not there, but he's got other weapons. Struck out Paul Goldschmidt last time up. Being your driver's not there, keep it in the bag. Use your three wood. Great take by Goldschmidt who walks a lot 107 times one more than Bryce second in the league Joey Votto at 108. Heads up right here 3 0 he's going to be swinging anything close. Low. That breaks the string of consecutive batters retired. And brings up Wellington Castillo two outs fifth inning. Smacks his second walk. Back. Goldschmidt just in safe.
Target in. And another soft toss to first. Paul Goldschmidt needs one stolen base for 30. Didn't look like Castillo's heart was in that swing. Max Scherzer baffling the D-backs here at 0 and 2. Well, you go two ways here. You go fastball in to keep him off the slider one two, or you just go right to the well. Lean ten. I'm going right to the well. Jose Lobatone makes balls that are almost hitting the dirt look like strikes. Did you see that? I mean, that wasn't even close, and he framed it up to make it look close. Watch where this pitch is, and watch what Lobatone does with it at the end. <laughs> Unbelievable. So smooth back there. Like I always say, it's like watching Omar Vizquel play shortstop with what he does with the glove. One ball and two strikes. And this one heading to the rail over there. And nice catch by the fan. Ryan Zimmerman wasn't there yet, so nice play. Ryan had a long way to go down that track. <laughs> did you see did you see the lady next to him and the look of astonishment in her face like you saved my life you just caught that when he showed it to her at the very end the look she had was priceless look at <laughs> did you really just do that you are such a stud great play And he turns over the changeup. Two balls, two strikes. Top of the fifth inning. Arizona, two runs, five hits, including the leadoff shot. First pitch of the game by Gene Segura, his 20th. Max very efficient since then. Castillo's hit the ball hard twice. Line drive to left, double to center. And a 2 2, and he strikes out on the off speed. Max Scherzer equals his career high with number 276.
Everybody at home needs to change seats right now. Whatever you're doing, do something different. Get off the couch, mix it up, go out in the garage, come back, jog around the block. Whatever it takes, the most popular way to follow the Nats after you change seats is with MLB.com app at the number one app for live baseball. That's not it. She's getting ready to call Paula Price or Dorothy Price. Enjoy game day live. <laughs> Video highlights, stack cask at MLB.com. At that, on your favorite device right now. You're such a stud. Thank you. You saved my life. And we got a foul ball. It's like I just reached up. It was just like that one time in high school. And I caught it. And I saved her life. And I am the man. He is. That was a good catch. Way to go. And she's saying, I just got out of the way because it got scary there. Yep, you're on TV. He's saying, you know, the scouting report was I should have been down a little bit further, but I saw he was late on the fastball, so I just decided to stand right here, and it came right to me. Great moments in fandom. Yep. One ball, one strike, bottom of the fifth underway. Ryan Zimmerman leads off. Nats trying to solve. 25 year old Matt Cook, 53 pitches, 37 strikes through his first four innings. And he keeps pumping them in there. It's one and two. I'm changing seats. Enough of this. I'm standing up this inning. Up the middle. That's where they had Segura playing. He can plant and throw for the first out, fifth inning. 15 in a row retired. Well, I thought this was a base hit. First bounce in the dirt, it gets over Cook's head, and then there's Gene Segura standing right there. So that just means somebody didn't change seats. One person's all it takes. And you know who you are, and I know where you live. Brian Goodwin struck out swinging first time. And really just two pitches, cutting it and sinking it. You're running it back and, and cutting it. And this one, Segura has to come in, make the quick exchange. Two down with Danny Espinosa next. All right, we're going to try to channel one of these. DC Lexus Steelers are donating 250 bucks to the Children's National Health System for every Tater and Nats player hits this year. So keep them coming. It's for a wonderful cause. Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Danny's hit 23 on the year. One of those nights when he's not batting eighth. 14 from the left side and a very impressive number of nine from the other side of the plate where you don't get nearly as many at bats. And the count is 0 and 1. Fair ball. Goldschmidt. Three grounders. That's it for the Nats quickly. Fifth inning. Matt Cook on some kind of roll.
strikeouts tonight. His last seven outs all on K's. Yasmani Tomas swinging. Chris Owing swinging. Matt Hanniger, no contact. A taken third strike, breaking ball, Cook, and then Segura. Lamb, after a Goldschmidt walk, Castillo. Nine in the game and a career high tying, 276. Washington area Toyota dealers for all the K's tonight times $37 to the children's in it, the National Institutes of Health, helping children and their families, Toyota K's for kids. You know, all those strikeouts you just saw were on the off speed. He's had tremendous feel for the slider curveball and change tonight. Just recently broke out the curve and the change. Strike one on the heater tailing in on Brandon Drury. Sixth inning underway. We've seen him do this before where, where the fastball command just isn't there. And then the slider curve and change are so good. That he actually has a great outing without his fastball. There's the slider line drive right at Danny Espinosa. More on Max and Dusty Baker. Here's Dan. Bob, as we get near the playoffs, the question of whether Max Scherzer could go on short rest, maybe in the NLDS, has gotten tossed around. Dusty Baker kind of shooting that down today, saying he'd really prefer not to do, to do that with Max, saying he'll likely end the regular season around 230 innings. You can't push him too hard. You need the other pitchers to do their jobs, too. Dusty saying everybody's got to earn their keep. Everybody's got to earn their money. He wants to keep the door open to maybe going to Max on short rest later in the playoffs, but doesn't want to burn out his starter or risk injury. Yeah, and I guess the big question right now is other than Tanner Roark, who are those pitchers? Who will they be? Lots been made about Geo against the Dodgers as they have struggled against lefties this year. Where do you go from there? Well, Tomas obviously in swing mode. Well, that guy's got to step up big time. Start tomorrow night against Shelby Miller. Mike Rizzo said it's unlikely that Steven Strasburg will be ready for the NLDS. Maybe the NLCS. But. Got to get there first. Fair ball went scooting right by the bag. Anthony Rendon sidearm whip a beauty two outs. So Max. Getting some contact here in the sixth. That could keep him in this game longer. He is scheduled to bat second, bottom of this inning. So Gene Segura, leadoff homer, first pitch of the game. Mike Lamb, pardon me, Jake Lamb on base twice, walk and a double. And then Castillo, the other RBI with his double in the third. Chris Owings, the shortstop. One for two, base hit up the middle. Slider is just dirty. They're not picking it up. It's got to be looking like the fastball to those guys down there. They're not picking up the rotation. Shook off the fastball going with the slider. Rendon got a piece of it gets away from him. Base hit for Owings. Great reaction by Anthony. So 97 miles an hour on the hit speed right here and Anthony Rendon almost just absolutely robbed Chris Owings. Playing in for the bunt not a lot of reaction time toes almost to the grass and. Yeah, it hit him on the heel. I thought he might have overreached it, but not a lot of time to judge. Ball was hit hard. Max Scherzer now against Mitch Hanniger.
fly ball to center. Strikeout victim number five back in the fourth. That's a Max balk. stumbles, and that's a balk. And Owings will be awarded second base. Looks like he caught a cleat, and you see Max do this when the hitter calls time late, and that, that's exactly what it looked like, except for the hitter didn't call time. Cleaning his spikes out, but this is usually when you see Max when a hitter calls time. How many times have we seen that this year? When he does the long pause? That time he just caught a cleat. So situation changing now. Do you do you pitch to Hanniger with the base open? And Coke on deck. Or Cook, excuse me. Oh, one the count. Good looking fastball. Didn't get the call. Take it, Max is saying, yeah, I did it. Go ahead. Go to second. It's first balk. That's the third, uh, fourth balk by a Nationals pitcher this season. Petit and Roark had one earlier. Lucas Giolito had one. And so the count is one and two as he goes to that great slider again. Two nothing game. Max Scherzer trying to keep it that way with plenty of innings left in which to score some runs. Mercedes Benz will track it. Trying to run it back. Watch Jose try to sell the call. He knew it was a ball. Close though. Slider's wide open here if he can make it look like a strike for a second. Slider away. Don't have to throw a strike right here with the pitcher on deck. Nobody throwing in the Diamondbacks bullpen. There's no way that Chip Hale pinch hits for a guy with a no hitter. So if he wants to expand with you, throw a ball. If he swings, great. If he doesn't, get the pitcher. Not a big deal right here. You don't have to throw a strike. Great slider. Not a strike by the time it got to Lobatone. New career high for Max Scherzer. 277 strikeouts. 13th time this year with 10 or more. This guy deserves some run support. Bottom of the six coming up.
Copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Washington Nationals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Washington Nationals. Fireworks at the start of last night's game celebrating a third division championship for the Nationals. Now they want to do a little bit of lighting up on the scoreboard and the only entry tonight Jason Worth hit by a pitch with one out first inning since then 17 in a row set down by Matt Cook having the night of his young career and it looks like he might be coming out of the game or he might be hurt Chip Hale walking out and a trainer with him blister issue look at him looking at his finger yeah well we mentioned it was over an inning ago. He was beyond any number of pitches he'd ever thrown in the big leagues. He had thrown and done a lot of starting in the minor leagues, but can he continue? Well, I talked to Bob Brenly between innings. He's on a 75 pitch pitch count. He was thinking Chip Hale might let him go a little longer because of the circumstances, but all right. Blister check. Okay, all right. And somebody didn't change seats last inning. So. Maybe you change houses this inning. Go into your neighbor's house, have them come over into your house. That's need a knock. Change neighborhoods, maybe. Lobotone leads off. And I might have said change sheets. Do that too, I don't care. That one off of Castillo. And Wilmer Defoe is out of the dugout for a moment, goes back down the stairs. But he had to, I guess, drop off something, and now he's walking to the on deck circle. So Max could be done after 98 pitches. And if they don't have a big inning here, that would forego his chances of winning 20 this year. Upstairs, one and two. Boy, I tell you what, that was a gutty effort by Max tonight. He had a really good feel for his off speed stuff. Lobatone to right center, and the Nets have a knock. <laughs> A wave to the fans from Jose Lobatone and in the bottom of the sixth inning, there goes the no hitter. Sit ball, sit. Jose Lobatone, first knock of the night. So for all of you that changed neighborhoods and houses and seats, that one's for you. Look at Jose clapping as he goes to first. I love it. There goes the no hitter. Yeah, I'll say it twice. It took six innings or five. Wilmer Defoe, two for ten, three RBIs as a pinch hitter. 292 overall, 14 for 48 in 26 games. Now I got to take care of the shutout. And that's why Felipe Alou always used to say that. There goes the no hitter. That's the first thing you got to take care of. You take care of the shutout second, and then you try to score more runs than the other team. It's how he managed every day. Mike Butcher, pitch, pitching coach. Are you looking at his finger? And uh, when they all went out there first time, that did not count as a visit this inning. It was for possible, quote, injury purposes. So pitching coach has made his visit. Rando Delgado has been up and throwing now for a dozen pitches or so. 
Defoe then Turner. So a bunch of speed in there and next with Lobatone on first base. 2 0 pitch. And Wilmer Defoe takes one off the plate, 3 0. He's going to walk on four. Two on, nobody out. Trey Turner is next. All right, same seats. Same houses. Same sheets. Same neighborhoods. Don't move a muscle. We're going to do this together. Turner pop up to first, fly ball to center. Same sheets is kind of gross though, but it, it, whatever it takes right now. Trey peeking at you back there on the scoreboard. That's going to be it for Cook. They go five plus. One hit, one walk, one hit batter. He struck out three. Diamondbacks will switch out center fielders here and pitchers. The Nats trying to get on the board here. I'm six. First of all, Trey Turner is up next. Randall Delgado, 26 year old right hander, who pitched uh, against one man last night, struck on Anthony Rendon in the fourth inning after Ar Archie Bradley left. And his numbers. And opponents hitting 267. Fastball, slider, curveball change. Fastball 92. Slider 82. Occasional changeup at 85. Socrates Brito takes over in center field. And I'm sure he'll bat against Archimedes Camonero someday. And there's Pedro Severino who will run for Jose Lobatone at second base. Nets have three catchers so they can do this. I thought it was pronounced Socrates. It's a good name. Turner one for one against Delgado and he couldn't come close to that slider low and away. Trey's hacking tonight. He's started the first pitch all three times, hasn't he? It's all right. Swinging bat's a dangerous bat. A one pitch. Castillo keeping that one close.
perfect to the outside edge according to Adam Hamari strike two. I think Cal missed that one that's down you don't want to swing at that. And you swing at this as a ground ball and watch where the glove goes almost to the dirt good frame probably sold the call. Maybe Calamari got it right. Turner eyeballing that one in off speed. Two balls two strikes. Screeches into it. Everybody else trying. Brandon Jury very deep and left. Yeah, he Anything is. flared out there is going to fall in. Well, Trey Turner's got pop, but Brandon Jury is a relief pitcher right now where he's standing. Two to the count. Turner takes it outside. The count is full. Another patient hitter. And I use patient regarding Trey in air quotes. He's walked nine times this year, but he's had a good at bat here. As worth the weights. Up and in, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. Here they come. Same seats. Do not move a muscle. The line is moving. Nice 0 2 walk by Trey Turner. Nicely done. Don't even blink. Jason Worth tonight hit by a pitch. Fly ball to right. Career against Delgado, two for four with a home run. To ambush or not to ambush is the question right now for Jason Worth. Do you get on this first pitch? Great question. Guy just threw a four pitch, or rather a full count walk. And Jason, great with men on base lately. 70 RBIs. Oh. On base with that hit by pitch first inning, 11 of his last 13 games. That was right down the middle. Tough spot for Delgado here. <laughs> Out of play, right side. So the first pitch right down Broadway, second pitch right down Broadway, Er. Maybe this will be right down Broadway East. Can't imagine he's going to throw him anything real good here in an 0-2 count, but you got to be ready. Oh, two, and he got him with a changeup that skipped into Castillo's mid. One out. So the first pitch right down the middle. I think the second one was better, and that's where Jason wanted to seal the deal. He's frustrated he missed that one. Then pretty good changeup from Delgado right there for strike three. So now Stephen Drew with a chance. Drew's hit the ball well twice tonight. Two fly balls to center. The last one was out to the far end of the visitors' bullpen, caught on the track by Hanniger. Back in the fourth. 
Not biting on the first pitch changeup. Drew Career one for one with a three run homer against Randall Delgado and a walk. Ball two. Okay, he missed with the first pitch changeup. Then he misses with a slider. This is why I talk about painting yourself into a corner. So now Steven Drew is just all chips in the middle on a fastball. And if it has any kind of plate, this is going to be hit hard somewhere. If he throws you a 2 0 changeup right here, swing right over the top, miss it by a mile, but he puts a fastball over the plate, you're looking. Not for a sack fly, not for anything else, but some serious damage in a gap or in a seat. That's down by two. There's the fastball. It's out to left center, but it's tailing back to Drury. He'll catch it in the gap. Two runners will move up, and it's a 2-1 game. Stephen Drew, RBI number 20. And Defoe over to third. Well, good at bad. He wanted to do more. I'll guarantee if you go down there and ask him right now. But that pitch just a little bit low, and he tried to scoop it up and shoot it in the gap. A good pitch, location-wise, elevation-wise, by Delgado and Stephen Drew was thinking bigger and better things. And now Anthony Rendon has a chance to get Max off the hook or better. Tying run at third. Rendon 0 for 2. Career against Delgado 0 for 3. And Trey Turner with a big time lean going on at first, and Delgado stepped off. Here he goes. Fake throw. And for Trey Turner, number 28. And anything over the infield to left center or even straight away left puts the Nats ahead. He's going to go a little farther than that, heading for the bullpen. See you later. Rendon, a three run shot. Look at Scherzer. Look at Dusty. And what a swing by Rendon to put the Nats on top. He's so shy, but here he comes. Ryan Zimmerman next. How about the symmetry there? Anthony Rendon with home run number 19 which puts him in line for 20, which will make the Nats the third team ever in the National League to have six guys with 20 home runs. He puts Max Scherzer in line for win number 19 with a chance to win 20, obviously a long way to go in this. But what a big swing of the bat by Anthony Rendon to put his ball club up four to two and everybody at home that stayed in their same seats. There you go. You were a part of that. And one more thing for Anthony, a new career high in RBIs with 84. 
One swing doing a lot of different things. Zimmerman on two and one. High fly ball to center. Rushing in for that burrito. So the Nats get two off of the starter Cook, two off of Delgado, and Anthony Rendon changes the ball game. And now the Nats into the late innings have a two run lead. Five hundred hits in your career home runs a good way to do it right so that was career hit number five hundred for Anthony Rendon his 19th home run of the year and just look at him smooth that out with one arm he let go of that top hand so early and just stayed through that ball kind of massaged it out of the ballpark and look at Max and Dusty in the background with the awkward hug with the manager <laughs> we've seen a bunch of those this year but they need hugging practice before the playoffs they need to tighten that up. That was should I hug you I don't want to hug you but we're hugging everybody's looking at us hug I'm happy you're happy who cares. Hit number 500. Career high in RBIs on that swing more importantly puts his ball club on top and Sammy Solis is back in the bullpen and he's in this game. Socrates Brito. For the Diamondbacks came in on the double switch. He's in center field batting ninth. Hits it well. Espinosa with a short leap right there to grab it. One out. Big time momentum with the home team. Gene Segura next facing Solis for the first time. Anthony Rendon has three three run homers since the middle of August. Pedro Severino, after pinch running, stays in to catch. <laughs> I think Scherzer, Max, I should say, wanted to like, chest bump Dusty, like in the mosh pit, just crush him with his chest. And then Dusty went in for the hug. And then Max still wanted to crush him because he was fired up. Watch. I'm just going to analyze this. Watch, he wants to, he just wants to crush him with his chest right there. He wants to crush him. <laughs> and then Dusty goes for the hug. That is the greatest thing I've seen all season long. Max wanted to just chest bump him. And Dusty just wanted to hug. Either way, it was great stuff. <laughs> you talk about a lift for this ball club. Bad news last night. Fall behind early tonight. Max on the ropes and then battling and battling and now the Nats get him four runs. Long way to go but what a great turnaround for the ball club in that sixth inning. Boy does he love to compete. Manager and the pitcher. Both you're right. And I don't know who likes it more. Dusty Baker's fierce. 
Don't let all the smiles and laughter and nice guy stuff fool you. He's he's a fierce competitor as I've ever been around. Right side, Drew waiting. Line drive to short, ground ball to second. And Sammy Solis now will deal with Jake Lamb as Blake Trinan cranes his neck to look over the wall and keep up to date. Trinan's ready for Goldschmidt, who's on deck, and then Castillo, another right handed batter. So Sammy lefty lefty here against Jake Lamb. Lamb a first inning walk, third inning double. Breaking ball didn't miss by much. It's 1 1. Did a nice job tonight. Calling the game, framing pitches, breaking up no hitters, smiling. Chopper waiting for it over there. Rendon on the shift to Zimmerman. It's a one, two, three, seventh, and welcome back, Sammy Solis. Time to stretch. Of the Nats, despite being out hit, six to two to lead four to 2017 Nats plus memberships on sale right now. Join now for the only way to guarantee 2016 postseason tickets and enjoy the exclusive experiences, rewards, and access that membership provides. 202675 Nats or log on to the address bottom of the screen. Get set for the playoffs and for next year. 26 year old left hander Steve Hathaway. 22nd appearance for Arizona. Fastball curveball change, mostly fastball curveball. The fastball averages 92.5 miles an hour. D backs 14th rounder three years ago. Born in Massachusetts, went to college. Franklin Pierce in New Hampshire. Goodwin, Espinoza, and Severino. Trying to get one of those hats for a while now from Franklin Pierce. Oh, because it's FP. It does. JP Ricciardi, front office for the Mets. Buddy's the head coach at Franklin Pierce, and all their logos say FP on their unis everywhere. 
Who wouldn't want one of those? Yeah, just wear my name around town. That's pretty cool. Hey, everybody. Look at me. I think it's neat. Small school. Big leaguer from a small school. That doesn't happen very often. Two balls, two strikes to Goodwin. Up and in for the strikeout. We call it the next five usually, but it's the final five. Geo and Shelby Miller tomorrow night. We hope the weather allows the Nats to play. Joe Ross and Robbie Ray, former Nats farmhand who's been striking out everybody this year. And then the Marlins are in for three for the weekend. Keep in mind, four o'clock game Saturday, three o'clock game Sunday. And that Sunday at three is because everybody in baseball plays at the same time on the last day of the season. So that's looking for Gio to come up big tomorrow. That would be a big boost for him for next week as well. Curveball in there to Danny Espinosa. 0 for 1 career against Steve Hathaway. There's Sean Kelly for the eighth with Goldschmidt and Castillo, right handers, the first two. This one back out of play. I probably need to be more specific. Everyone on Twitter asking me if they can change seats now. Yeah, yeah, you can relax. A lot of people have to use the facilities. Go ahead. Your, your job is done here. You put a four spot up in the bottom of the sixth. Move around. Do what you got to do. Danny Espinosa down on strikes for the 170th time. Nissan will track strike three. Here's Severino gets an A-B here after pinch running. Right side and Goldschmidt came forward to get it. He'll get to the bag himself. Paul Goldschmidt's only made four errors over there all year. Nets go one, two, three. This one to the eighth.
been a good one here tonight. This game summary is brought to you by Cox's new contour. Get right to the good stuff. Max Scherzer was the good stuff tonight with 10 strikeouts. The 13th time he's had 10 plus this year. And Anthony Rendon, 84 RBI, new career high, 19th home run. So one more to join everybody else at 20, four to two, as we head to the top of the eighth. Sean Kelly, 32 year old right hander. New career high every time he pitches, number 66 on the air. 80 strikeouts, 56 innings. Hot shot, Espinosa plants and fires. And the fastball to Zimmerman for one out. What a shortstop. Boy, slick play there on the short hop to the backhand side. This ball was hit hard by Paul Goldschmidt. You see the in-between hop, not a problem, and stand up and let it eat. Somebody give me the speed on that throw. I'm going to say that was 93 on a wild guess. So Paul Goldschmidt, one for three career against Kelly. Castillo steps in 0 for 1 against Sean. Drops it in there at 82 to get ahead. Pretty good hack. Castillo, two hard hit balls tonight. Liner to left in the first. RBI double to deep center in the third. Thanks to Max Scherzer, the Diamondbacks have one base hit since the third inning. That line drive off Rendon's glove by Chris Owings two innings ago. He put the stops to them. Then his teammates got him some runs. This will play for Jason Worth. Yoga in the outfield, October 2nd, 3.05. Marlins will be in town. After the game, you can stretch, stretch, and stretch some more. You also get a Nationals yoga mats. One pursuit at Nationals, nationals.com slash yoga. That's the touchdown stance right there, I believe. For the extra point stance, isn't that what they call it? Brandon Jury, 0 for 3 tonight. Tight slider. 1-1. One, one. Gets under one, another fly ball to left. Jason Worth tracking it. Sammy Solis, one, two, three. Sean Kelly, one, two, three. This one to the bottom of the eighth.
Nationals baseball on Masson. Brought to you by visitannapolis.org. Create your moment at visitannapolis.org. Well, they're having a good time, relaxing the ballpark, watching a good ball game now. Ben Revere will lead off in the pitcher spot, bottom of the eighth. Bullpen's been flawless, and now deeper into the Arizona bullpen. 25 year old Enrico Borgos from Panama. It'll be his 43rd appearance on the year. He's a strikeout guy, 43 in 40 innings. A fastball average is 96. Slider is his best secondary pitch at 89. Occasional split at 3%. So good heater, gear up and catch one out front. Ben Revere, 0 for 1 career against him. There he is. Mark Melanson. D backs have six, seven, and the pitcher spot, which is the eight hole in the ninth. Revere, left side bouncer to his left lamb. Got rid of it in a hurry and bent out by a step. Johnny Holiday and Ray Knight. It's an Ed's Extra Post Game Show presented by W.B. Mason when this one's over. Trey Turner, 0 for 2, but a key walk, a steal, and then a score in front of the Rendon home run two innings ago. It's all about runs, right? For a leadoff guy, 51 scored in 68 games for Trey Turner. Hopefully, we see that guy tomorrow. That would be great. Weather permitting. Shelby Miller, right hander, going for the D backs. Geo for the home team. Busted bat, and that will drop. So tomorrow night, Gio Gonzalez is 2-0, 2.97 career against the D-backs. Trying for his 12th win. Shelby Miller, who's had a rough ride this year, 2-12. ERA way up there last year with Atlanta, 6-17, but he had a 3 ERA. They just didn't score for him, and we'll get you going at 6.30 with Nets Extra, Mass and two tomorrow night. Looking for an inspired effort from Gio Gonzalez tomorrow based on what's happened here the last few days. He's not on second yet? What's going on? Turner one for one tonight. 28 out of 33 for the season.
Runner holding, pitch low. There goes Turner. Throw never left the batter's box out of Castillo's hands. And now that's 29 for Trey Turner. 29 stolen bases. Come on. Good jump right here by Trey. And a throw just a little bit low. And oh, no. short. Base hit gives you a three run lead. We've seen some players do goofy things with Trey Speed, haven't we? Infielders, outfielders, catchers, even pitchers. Yeah. It, it, I mean, full panic mode when this guy runs. We've seen it. The best defenders in baseball go full panic mode because of Trey Turner's speed. Reminds you of the kid in the movie 42 had told his mom he discombobulated the man. <laughs> speed will do that. That's on the inside edge with a heater, two and two. Payoff pitch worth ripping fly ball to center. You know Turner's tagging. He's at third base with two outs. Stephen Drew drove in a run last time got the Nats on the board before Rendon's dramatic home run. So Stephen 0 for 2 with his 20th RBI tonight. One oh pulled into the dugout. <laughs> Dusty so nervous and tight here in the last few innings. Enjoying life, man. That's what he does. Someone swatted at that foul ball, just went in the dugout, missed it. Drew on the button. And then Segura takes care of that business. So the Nats will strand two runners all night. And we go to the night. It's Melanson time.
31 year old right hander getting ready for his 27th Washington appearance freight rear works and what's due up for the D backs in the top of the ninth. Yasmani Tomas one for three tonight. Chris Owings after him he's got a couple of hits. And then the. Pinch hitting spot the pitcher spot in the number eight hole. Diamondbacks have 48 pinch hits on the year six of those home runs and here comes Melanson again. Yeah fastball low 90s. Cutter low 90s breaking balls a knuckle curveball straight up straight down it's firm. 72nd appearance for Melanson. 43 for 47 in save opportunities. And opponents hitting 210 off mark. Yasmani Tomas against Mark Melanson career. They've never faced each other. And this guy you can see from his. At bats tonight free swinger. Max got him a couple of times without having to throw him a strike really. After his base hit in the second. There's that cutter. Way to the right. Strike one. I like the cutter that he throws right at right handers and lets it feed back to the inner half for a strike. Because your natural reaction it's kind of like the front hip sinker to a lefty you think it's going to be off the plate for a ball you give up on it and it comes back. This might be one right here. That takes care of that bat. And Rendon takes care of the batter. One out. What a beautiful pitch. Unless you're trying to hit it. So this might have just been a fastball with a little cut to it. Pretty straight. Still. Obviously got in on him. Toothpicks flying everywhere. Chris Owings, one for four against Melanson. D backs really don't have much from the left side as far as pinch hitters. That's Kyle Jensen, a right handed batter on deck. Up in the zone, cutting. Strike one. So 97 games the most the Nats can win if they hang on here tonight. If they win out. Target in. Ooh. Ooh. Oh so close. Yeah right now trying to make it 92. With the Dodgers at San Diego later. Man, he's got everything working tonight. There's the big curveball. Knuckle curve straight up, straight down. Watch this. Boop. That's just filthy. One and two with one out. Another one. How do you and Owings that? did well to stay alive. Yeah, how do you found that off. <laughs> Four two nets on the strength of a four run sixth inning. And all the RBIs driven in by the three and four hitters Drew and Rendon. Emergency hack again. Yeah. 
Outfield fairly shallow in center and in right. And Turner really playing to the offside. Worth straight away left. Swing and a miss. Severino's got it to Zimmerman. Two outs. And now they're going to switch off to the former Virginia Cavalier, Phil Goslin, here as the pinch hitter. Goslin 0 for 1 against Melanson. Going to bunt it in the air. Thank you very much. Game over. Caught by Rendon. And that is a lights out closing job by Mark Melanson. Anthony Rendon, the hero of this one. Max Scherzer gets his 19th win. He'll go for 20. And he has to be the front runner in the Cy Young talk, doesn't he? What a dramatic way leaving the game behind and then coming out on top.